All right. Welcome to a little segment I'm calling Direct in Direction. My name is Kyle LaPointe, and I'm a host of the Dynasty podcast called Dynasty Self-Help. We help you analyze your team, your game, and yourself in an effort to provide a more rich and fun hobby experience. Today, I'm going to examine 10 key aspects of your fantasy football team in Shark Tank 2 and follow that up with a question. Please keep in mind that I'm going to be very direct, to the point, and brutally honest. And the questions are not necessarily going to be easy. Is that okay? Absolutely. Fantastic. So before we get into the meat of this potato, I'd like to ask you just a few things about you. What is your name in real life? Josh Aronovich. Josh, it's nice to meet you in person. We've been talking a lot on the the message boards. Uh, And in Shark Tank 2, in addition to our names on the message boards, we also are No Guts, No Glory, A League of Daredevils. So what is your chosen name and why? Elizabeth Warren's Progressive Future. And at risk of uh, breaking our league's uh, rule about talking about politics, um, Warren was actually one of my favorite professors in law school. Had her for bankruptcy, for secure transactions, spent a lot of time in her office hours talking about politics, talking about policy, and whether someone agrees with her ideologically or not, I don't think anyone can mistake the idea that she is absolutely bold and someone who puts forth uh, new ideas and aggressive ideas to tackle some of the problems that our country's facing. So while I'm uh, upset she's no longer running for president, uh, I was proud to support her and proud to support some of the ideas that she's pushing for. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody's got their uh, political viewpoints, and I just think that anytime you have somebody that you care about or that you have had some personal relationship with, it's it's always a little more near and dear to the heart. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, regardless of uh, people's political views, seeing them as people and uh, getting to know them. And the fact that regardless of where we come from politically, regardless of how we rank competing values, we all care about this country and want to make it great. Damn straight. Well put. Man, uh, so where about do you live? I live in southern New Jersey, about 20, 25 minutes outside of Center City, Philadelphia. Wow, okay, so you're you're uh, kind of over there in some of the epicenter as well of the COVID activity that's mm-hmm. going on. Yeah, I think we've got about five or six cases in, in my town so far. Wow. Yeah, well, that's not good, man. We got to all try to stay away from it as best we can. I know some of us, exactly. uh, some of us may not be people that have pre-existing conditions. I know my wife and I both are kind of we would fall into the folks that really shouldn't get it. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, type people, but it's all right. You know, we, we all got to do what we can for each other. Eventually we're all going to get it and hopefully we get it in a time or in a way that it's not going to hurt us. So exactly. All right. Well, I'm a beer guy. So you might've heard that mm-hmm. question asked before. And I'd like to ask you, what's a favorite style of beer that you prefer? Probably my favorite styles lean more towards the darker beers, sort of the porters, the stouts. Um, had a really good one. Forget it. It was called a local uh, Woodbury, New Jersey brewery called Eight and Sand. And right. had one that won a few awards. It was a uh, a porter that had uh, chipotles in it. So it was sort of spicy and, and, and rich and sort of complex. But those uh, are the kinds of beers I like to drink most. Pepper beers are incredibly difficult to brew because you can way overdo any sort of spice but mm-hmm. pepper especially when you add the capsaicin on top of it it's a it's an amazing thing but can do some damage to your palate if you're not careful so, sure balancing act pretty cool man that that's great i haven't heard of that brewery i've heard of quite a few of them but man there's so many just in our area mm-hmm. i don't know if i know every brewery in my local area anymore <laughs> but uh all right so final question is what is your favorite thing about fantasy Hockey. My favorite thing about fantasy hockey is that it's an undiscovered country because I have not played it yet. Although I am actually a Montreal Canadiens fan. Since uh, my dad grew up and was born and raised in Montreal. But when it came to football, I rooted against his rooting interests. So I figured I'd make it up for him by rooting with him in hockey. There you go. One of the original six. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Now it's time for the hard-hitting analysis and drama-laden questions. Are you ready? I can ready? hardly wait. Okay. Dion Jones is well known for being an elitely talented player who has trouble with injuries. Bradley Chubb is recovering after missing most of the year. You have other defensive players that seem to have high upside that previously have been capped by injury. What is one team that you have two wide receivers playing for? Hmm. Team that I have two wide receivers playing for would have to be. 
Minnesota. That's right, the Minnesota Vikings. And that wasn't yeah, always they the case. Because they picked up Tajay Sharp. They picked up Tajay yeah. Sharp late. So, okay. Question number two. Mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson, you are the first team that I've interviewed that has a marquee point scoring phenom as their QB1. To get him, you sacrifice nearly 25% of your startup budget, or roughly the equivalent of an entire future draft worth of shark bucks. Mm-hmm. When a horse is used for its semen, it is called a stud. What is the ingredient often found in fake wasabi? Horseradish. That is correct. Horseradish. You're two for two. Okay. Your tight ends are plentiful and deep. So <laughs> some can win now and some can win later. This should provide a lot of depth and longevity for you at the position. What are two of your receivers that are cousins in real life? Um, Marquise Brown and Antonio Brown. You got that right, too. Three for three. Man, you're killing it. In the first two days of your draft, you spent over half your budget on three players. In a league where we are starting 22 players, and that's a requirement, many would be worried about that heavy bank in such a small amount of players. The banks are a natural river or excuse me, the banks of a natural river are built up to protect areas from flooding and are called what? That I don't know. Levees. Those are called uh, levees. Yeah, if you were in New Orleans, you would know what a That's levee right, is. the levees broke, yep. Uh-huh. Jimmy Graham. I just saw him, realized he's still playing football. Yes, At times, is. I had seen a lifeless and shadow of his former self playing for Green Bay in 2019. Mm-hmm. But in 2020, he will be playing for the Chicago Bears. If one of your safeties was a comedy movie actor, who would he be? Hmm. Famous Amos? It would be Sean William Scott. Mm-hmm. Sean oh. William Scott. All right. Uh, so you have Bradley Chubb, spelled with two Bs, mm-hmm. and Randall Cobb. Spelled with two Bs. You have Brashad and Brian and Bradbury and Buckner. Of all of these players, how many Bs are in a typical honeybee hive? Hmm, that is a really good question. I would have to guess around 2,000 maybe? Uh, typically between 30 and 40,000 Bs. Wow. Yes, a beehive will put out at least 8,000 Bs a week. New bees mm-hmm. from one queen. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. They're they're quite the amazing creatures, producing us wonderful, uh, formidable for our beverages. So that's exactly what I was going to go. With. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely wanting something brewed with honey now. Brian Hoyer could very well be the starting quarterback for the hapless New England Patriots in 2020. That franchise seems destined for a fall, as it wasn't going to be able to retain many of its free agents this season. Aaron Hernandez was a fam- was famous for going to prison and was also famous for being part of the heavily arrested Urban Meyer Florida squad of 2008. 41 of 121 players claim that fame, but who is the most famous besides Hernandez to be arrested from that squad? Hmm. I know Riley Cooper went there, but it's not him. Um, from that squad during that time period or ever? That squad, that time period, that, that year. That time period, that year. Hmm. Probably, if you haven't gotten it now, you're probably not going to get it. It's yeah, a bit of a tricky it. one. This is Cam Newton. From oh. there, he went to Blinn Community College near Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. And from Blinn went to Auburn, where most people actually knew him. But first, he was in Florida committing crimes for Urban Meyer. Wow. Your team name in Shark Tank 2 is larger than any other teams. You have a roster that is in the top third in size. Your 11 wide receivers are bigger in count than most entire rosters. What is the sm- smallest particle known to modern physics? Hmm. Quark? That is it, a quark. All right. You seem to enjoy keeping up with the Joneses. You have Chandler Jones at linebacker. You have Deion Jones at linebacker. You have Marvin Jones at receiver and Chris Jones at defensive tackle. In what movie was the line, no time for love, Dr. Jones, spoken? I should know this one, but I don't. It's on tip of my tongue, but I can't place it. That is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Uh. All right, your wide receivers are... 
Uh, well, you have you have a lot of number. Your 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 wide receivers are plentiful. Well, my mother <laughs> taught me never to say anything but nice things. Why am I having such a difficult time saying something nice about your wide receivers? Probably because they are all over the map. There's no one thing that unites them. Some are injury prone, some are older, some are talented but have fallen off, some are young and haven't sort of stepped up yet, some have switched teams. So they're really eclectic, uh, but that's where the value was. And I figured getting a lot of wide receivers that have question marks, sure, but I'm confident that at least enough of them will rise to the occasion to give me a competitive squad there. Uh, you'll be fine. I was going to go for because they suck, but I accept that answer as well. It was pretty good. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your time. I appreciate your candid and truthful answers and my insightful and hard-hitting analysis.